having the right people, right seats, we also want to make sure they're doing the right things, right? We want to make sure that, you know, you can't improve what you can't measure. So that's where the scorecard, you were talking about the scorecard. What are the top metrics that you need to look at every week to make sure that we hit our goals? What are the, what are the top metrics that we need to see in order to make sure our company is healthy, right? And if there's a sounding bell, if there's something red going on and we're like, oh my gosh, we need to solve this. We can solve it before it, it you know, we're putting out fires before they become wildfires, right? Because we start seeing these numbers and we can, we can make decisions based off data. This is the Wealthy Contractor Podcast, brought to you by G4 Marketing. Interviews with today's top home improvement entrepreneurs about marketing, sales, money, mindset, and lifestyle. Now, here's your host, Brian Kaskavalsian. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Wealthy Contractor Podcast. This is Brian Kaskavalsian with G4 Marketing Group, and with me today, is Cesar Quintero, who is our EOS implementer. This guy has done so much for our business. I, I can't even begin to tell you. We'll talk a little bit about it um, as we go through. But you will hear throughout the podcast episodes, you'll hear different people talking about EOS, the Entrepreneurial Operating System. And I've been promising that I would have an episode that was all about EOS, but this dude's so busy that this is the first time <laughs> I'm able to get him. But Caesar, welcome. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for having me, man. Awesome. So um, I got to tell everybody, if uh, you do not already have a copy of The Seven Secrets to Becoming a Wealthy Contractor, what are you waiting for? They're free. Go get a copy at thewealthycontractor.com. Um, it's an important book. And um, anyway, go get a copy and I'll pay for the book. I just ask you to pay for shipping and handling. It's a great book, so, by the way. I loved it. Thanks. All right, so Caesar, um, we are going to talk about EOS. So let's start with what there's actually a book called "What the Heck is EOS?" So let's go. What with the, the heck is EOS? That's what right. Is EOS. So EOS stands for the Entrepreneurial Operating System, and it's it's based on the book Traction. Uh, which was authored by Gino Wickman. And Gino Wickman has done an amazing job in, in understanding and, and studying businesses for the last 20 years. Um, and now there's over 350 of us implementing this for different companies. There's 80,000 companies implementing this in their companies and over 10,000 focus days where uh, implementers like me have helped companies uh, implement EOS. So it's, it's a huge, um, it's a proven system. It's a simple system. And it's really all based on the concepts of entrepreneurial companies run like, you know, crazy. We're, you know, we're starting where everything's growing and the people that were doing this don't know where they're going. They don't know where their hand is, their bath is, you know, everything is happening. So EOS is simply an operating system to help entrepreneurs um, regain vision, to have a clear vision for all their team and where they're going, you know, um, also traction, gain traction, a, a planning, you know, where are you going to be in five years and three years and in, in one year, and then having the mating rhythms and the priorities to achieve that vision, right? So that's the traction piece. And then healthy, it's, a, it's making teams healthy. It's better communication systems, not having them in silos. You know, a lot of times, you know, we're not communicating right, or there's too many people doing the same thing. And so it's, it's just a, a better way to create healthy teams. So what I like to say in a, in a very brief summary, what does EOS do? EOS helps, uh, helps companies with vision, traction, and healthy. That's what it does. And it did and continues to do all of that for G4 Marketing. And um, it, it really has been, I say this all the time, and, and I know it's an overused term. I just don't know how else to say it. It, it was an absolute game changer for G4 Marketing Group. So that first meeting we had, just to give- I remember, I remember. It was three years ago, man. It's been three years. Three years. How many yeah. people were in that meeting? It was 
seven people, I think. Yeah, like six seven? or seven people. Today, six or seven. That was yeah. your whole company. Your whole that company was, our was in whole that meeting. Yeah. Company. <laughs> Today, our leadership team is like six people. Yeah. Um, we've we've grown like three times since then. And what I absolutely love about it, and I want you to go into the model. I see the model behind you because yeah. I think the model is very instructive for you to hit on each of those points. Yeah, of course. But, of course. but really what it did for us, and I'm just going to do this kind of in a nutshell, and this is kind of what I see it doing for other companies as well, is first it helped define the right people for the right seats, particularly mm-hmm. me. Yeah. Right particularly me and my partner, right? And so we, we needed to know, well, what is your role, my role in the business? What is her role in the business, right? And we, that helped define it for us. The other thing that was interesting too that day is everybody in the first meeting gets fired. Everybody, everybody gets, gets fired. fired. That's right. And then we go through a process of putting people back into the seats where they belong or we discover that they don't belong or they discover themselves. Remember, we had a couple of people that after a very short period of time realized, hey, I don't fit in this company anymore. And and they and they left. And I'm glad they did because it opened Yeah, there were people you wanted to leave. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. The other big thing that it did for us was accountability. Mm -hmm. So we had never really had a quote unquote scorecard, except for me, the scorecard was our monthly P and L. That was my yeah. lead. That was my main driver. Yeah. We're we profitable. That's it. Yeah. Right. Were we making money or were we not making money? Yeah. But as we find out in EOS, that is a lagging indicator, not a future based indicator. Yeah, it's after like the our, fact you can't, yeah. You either lost money and then you can't do anything about it. You already lost some money, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then there was the whole thing about how do you develop the scorecard, which was also just a, a, just amazing, was you asked us, what are the five key numbers that you need to know? And if I'm saying any of this wrong or using the wrong terminology, you know, uh, let me know. <laughs> but basically, it's what are the five key things in terms of numbers that you need to know? If you were stranded on a desert island, you yeah. had 10 minutes of Wi-Fi a week. And that was it. You had one chance to find out if your business was healthy or not. What got are so those you almost got it right. You almost got it right. It's five minutes. You have five minutes of five Wi-Fi minutes. stranded in a week. And then you want, you want five to seven, you know, five to 14 metrics to, yeah. to check. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then almost right. You, yeah. And so when you develop the scorecard and then you assign people to each of those, because that's the Each big number thing. has an owner. Each number right. has Each an owner. Number yeah. has an owner. And so when you have the weekly meetings, which by the way, I hated doing meetings. <laughs> I still hate doing meetings. You know how bad I am with meetings. Yeah. I hate meetings. But hey, now it's one meeting a week. That's all right. you have to go to. That's it. And most owners, yeah. by the way, most entrepreneurs are like me. They like yep. they hate meetings. They don't want to be a part of them. But yep. this meeting, this meeting has a structure. This meeting, ha- it, we talk about scorecard, we talk about accountability, and we and we resolve issues, and it's done in less than ninety minutes. Once and it's week. a problem solving meeting, right? So and that's that's what solving. I love about it. It's all about problem solving. It's nothing about reporting or disc- it's all problem solving. So that's right. it's an efficient meeting. I love that. Yeah, right. I agree. All right, so. We talked a little bit about some of my things with it. Let's let's yeah. go into let's talk about the model, the EOS sure. model, and what it's based on. For those of you that are listening, not watching, Caesar actually has the model behind him um, in a poster, but he's going to go through um, these for us. I'll throw it I'll, I'll definitely. So basically, what Gino discovered is that every company, no matter what you did, what service, what product, we all went through the same stuff, right? We all had the same issues and he actually quantified it. He got to 137 issues that every company, no matter what company is, has. And then he narrowed it down. Okay, if we focus on these six key components, then those issues start to disappear because we're tackling at their core, right? So what what the EOS model is all about is about these six key components. How do we fortify? How do we strengthen these six key components in our company? 
And so the first key component is vision, right? And vision is about where we're going. And most companies don't have a defined vision. And sometimes it's trapped in the head of the owner. Sometimes, but you know what? Every person that you're hiring, every person that works in your company has a vision for the company. And what we don't know if it's the same as yours or not, right? So everybody's tugging in their own direction. And this happened to me, right? When I hired my friends and I had my, you know, and I hired different people in my family, we all had the best intentions in mind. We were just not rowing on the same direction. We were each pulling in our own way where we wanted to go and where we wanted the business to be. So that's what the first key component is all about. The first key component is understanding a well-defined vision that is also shared by all. We want a vision that is clear and that is shared by every single person in your organization. It doesn't matter if you're cleaning, if, if you're cleaning the closet or if, you're, if, you, if it's an inventory guy or if it's a delivery guy. Everybody knows where the company's headed and they understand their piece in that vision, right? And what, how they affect that vision. So that's key component number one. Anything you want to add there? We're good? Keep going. I'll jump in All on right. a couple I'll of keep the going. other ones. All right. So vision, but just the one thing I will say something yeah. is in the seven secrets book, secret number one is all around this idea exactly. yeah. because most business owners, Caesar's right. Most business owners do not have a clear idea of where they want to go in terms of how it impacts them and their families. And then we do a piss poor job of then relating that vision to our teams. Correct. And so that's the only comment I've got. About. Awesome. Yeah. And then the second key component is people. And without people, you know, companies don't work. People is all around and people can, you, you can think of people internally. You can p think of people as vendors. You can think people as contractors. This doesn't matter who, who your people is. It's a people that you need to align. Right. And with people, it's having the right people in the right seats. So when we talk about right people, it's the people who fit your values, who fit the behaviors you want them to do, even if you're not looking, right? If you have a vendor, if you have a customer, if you have a, 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 an employee who don't do things the way you like to do them, they'll always suck your energy, right? Not only an employee, even a client, right? If a client doesn't fit your values and they don't appreciate you as, a, as, as, you know, as, their, as their provider, you'll bend over backwards, you'll do whatever you need to, but they'll never be happy because you're never doing it the way they want to do it, right? So this is all around fit. Having the right people is having understanding what my values are, what my behaviors are, but also understanding how people adapt to them. And all of our people processes, hiring, onboarding, rewarding, reviewing, firing people should be all based on our values because that's where we're making sure that we have the right people within the company that will achieve that vision for us. And then after right people, it's right seats. It's making sure that the structure, and you were talking about that with you and your partner, right? You are two partners, you're two owners, we all do everything. Everything comes by me and by her and, you know, and, and things. Yeah. Yeah. But we need a structure. We need a clear structure of who does what and who's ultimately accountable for what. So we use the accountability chart there where we map it out and we understand, okay, if you're the visionary, these are your five dysfunction. These are your five responsibilities. If you're the operations manager, these are your five things. If you sweep, you know, if you clean the office, these are your five things that you're accountable for. Right? So, Every single seat has a clarity of what they do and they all get it. They understand the job and they do it well. They want it. They want to do it. And they have capacity and resources to do the job well. So every single seat, when we fired everyone in the room, then we said, okay, if you wanted to have a job in this room, then you need a GWC that seat, which is get it, mind, want it, heart, and capacity, resources, time, right? I have the time to do this job well. So that's all around the GWC and the right people in the right seats, making sure that they're the people who, can, who, who are going to help you achieve your vision. Then we go to the third key component. Third key component is all around data because people are subjective, man, and we know that, right? Oh, yeah. So having the right people, right seats, we also want to make sure they're doing the right things, right? We want to make sure that, you know, you can't improve what you can't measure. So that's where the scorecard, you were talking about the scorecard. What are the top metrics that you need to look at every week to make sure that we hit our goals? What are, the, what are the top metrics that we need to see in order to make sure our company is healthy, right? And if there's a sounding bell, if there's something red going on and we're like, oh my gosh, we need to solve this, we can solve it before it, it you know, we're putting out fires before they become wildfires, right? Because we start seeing these numbers and we can, we can make decisions based off data. 
So once you have vision, people, and data, that's, you know, one, two, three, that's when issues start arising. So issues is our fourth key component. And issues in EOS is not a negative term. Issues in EOS is anything we need to solve. It's anything we need to discuss, anything we need to bring up. And what happens in most companies is I'm not going to speak up. It doesn't matter. Even, even if I say it, nothing ever changes. That's kind of the mentality of most of our teams. And what we want to do is we want to have a proactive way for people to bubble up issues, bubble up issues. And we have issues list and we have a place where every issue is, is parked. And if we're not solving it, it's still there. We'll solve it next week and we'll solve it next week. So it's having an issues list of a place where everybody can just file all the things that we need to solve. And then an IDS process that not only grabbing that issue, but identifying what is the core issue here? What is, what is happening here? How can I prevent this issue from happening again? What is at its core? And then once we define that, then we go into discussion mode. But most importantly, most meetings stay at discussion. What we need to do in these meetings is solve. So once we're discussing, 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 then we go, okay, let's move to solve. What are the commitments and the actions that we need to take based on this so that this issue doesn't surface up again, right? So that's the issues key component. After we have vision, people, data, and issues, we go to key component number five, which is processes. And this is the one you and I hate, right? Most right. entrepreneurs out there, we hate processes because yeah. we love to be different and we, we love, love to do we things. Love the results. We love we results. We love the work that goes into creating them, and we don't like to work within them. You know what it we is? Love I think them it's for our business. It's I think it's where else. typically the visionary and the entrepreneur, the owner of the business, has so many ideas and so many things, and you know, and 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 you, you can't be limited by the process and writing down all the specifics and right. doing all these things. So what I love about EOS is that their approach for processes is not writing down SOPs that are manuals and a hundred page things that nobody reads. It's all about 80, 20 rule, right? Write down checklists, make it as simple as possible. 20% of the things that need to happen, what needs to happen instead of how it needs to happen. Cause if you have a right person in the right seat, you know, you onboard them, you train them. Yes. But once they know how to do their job, they don't need to be going through a manual doing their job every day. They could just go through a simple checklist like pilots do, right? Pilots fly a plane a thousand times and they still have to go through the checklist, right? Just making sure that the top things are being done and that it's consistency, it's quality, and it makes it right. But what most companies get wrong is that they develop the processes and then they go into file, right? And each process, the same as in numbers, each process needs to have an owner. And that owner makes sure that everybody's following it and, and that process is being updated constantly, right? So every process should have an owner and it should be followed by all, all right? And that leads us to our last key component, right? So we talked about vision, people, data, issues, process. And the last one is traction, which is the name of the book, right? And traction is down in the ground. If you look at the model is, is below vision. Vision is up in the sky, traction is down in the ground. Because you can dream all you want, but if you don't do, you'll never get there. Like Gino says, vision without traction is hallucination, right? Yeah. So we need to start doing. So we can plan all we want, we can dream all we want, but traction is all about what do we focus on? What's our top priorities? And we call them rocks. We call, what are the rocks we need to accomplish in these next 90 days? And we start living in a 90 day world. Because when we plan in vision, we plan the five year, the three year, the one year, the quarter. But now it's like, okay, what, what do we need to achieve this quarter? And every week we're gonna have a meeting. And if I said, I'm gonna sell 10 new windows, I'm gonna, every week I'm gonna say, okay, I have, am I on track to sell those? Am I on track to sell those? And if I'm not, I need to start solving, how, what do I need to do differently? So what I love about all this model, it's that it's a very agile model. It's a model that, you know, especially during COVID and during all these, you know, pandemic talks and, and you've seen it in your company, right? What everybody talks to me about is, wow, this really helps us hone in and focus what we really need to do. And you know what? It's a pivoting moment every week. Every week you're pivoting, 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 making sure that we reach our quarterly goals. And then every quarter you're pivoting, 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 making sure that you reach your yearly goals. And then every year you're pivoting, 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 making sure that you reach your three and five year goals, et cetera, and, and your vision becomes realized. So it's all about, you know, vision and then the traction. What's a process we need to do in order to get there? Whew. Yeah, there that, that was good, man. I didn't want to, I, 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 sorry, I interrupted <laughs> you at all. That was 
freaking amazing. That's a, see, now people don't have to read the book. It's 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 all in in, in five minutes here. <laughs> well, what's funny is I've never read the book. Yeah. <laughs> don't well, that's why you that. hired an implementer. You didn't yeah, want exactly. to read That's why I hired an implementer. <laughs> that's the visionary in me, right? It's like what yeah. I'm not gonna like, go I want the book. result. I don't want I don't want the process. Somebody, right? Yeah, exactly. We're gonna stop here for a quick break. 2020 has been full of changes and opportunities. One of these opportunities is that you now get to attend Accelerate Live 2021 from the comfort of your home or office for the first time ever. 2021 is the year that's going to set you apart from your competition. And this event delivers the ideas, strategies, and tools that will help you achieve more high-quality leads, more sales, and more profits fast in 2021. But don't just take it from us. Hear what these attendees have to say. If you want to be successful and you want to learn new things that are going to help your business grow, that are going to help you become a better leader, who are going to help you have more freedom as a business owner, you're definitely going to want to attend. If they want to light their business on fire, this is the event to do it with. So go to AccelerateEvent.com today. Attendance is extremely limited and the price is going to go up the closer we get to the event. So get registered at AccelerateEvent.com at the best price available today and set your business up for a successful 2021. And now, back to the Wealthy Contractor Podcast. Okay, so why? So to the listener, why are we talking about this system and process? Yes, we pay Caesar to do this for us, but some of the ideas that are here, you don't necessarily have to go out and get an implementer tomorrow. You can work yeah. into it, but some of the concepts and the ideas that are a part of the EOS model and system and whatever we want to call it, what is it called? The model, the system? It's a, yeah, it's a, the EOS, it's a system. It's an entrepreneurial it's a system. operating system. Okay, so um, you could take parts and pieces of this and start to use them in your business and you'll see amazing results. So yep. when we talk about, and let me just kind of, I, I'm just gonna touch on a few of these. For example, so vision, having an idea of where we're going. I always talk about with business owners, and, and again, in the Seven Secrets book, this is the very first secret. And that is understanding, well, what do I want? How mm -hmm. much money do I want to make? Yep. Because so many business owners, and I was this guy, more, more, more. We just need to sell more. That was and me. Then, yeah. Right. Right. And then every month, every quarter, every year, maybe you might look at your P&L and say, oh, did we make money or did we not make money? Mm -hmm. Whereas the idea behind this is everything is intentional. So there's a five-year target. There's three years. You break it down. Now, what do we have to do this year in order to hit the three years so we can hit the five-year? Then yeah. you take it and you break that down into the smaller pieces. What I love, and I'm going to jump around here a little bit, but you know, you said we're in 90 day, uh, we're 90 doing, day world yep. in a 90 day world. We have 13 weeks yep. and what's great and why we've kept Caesar, by the way, because with most, he told us at the beginning, look, I'll probably, you only need me for a year, maybe two years. And then you guys yeah. could just do this on your own. Well, we've kept him just because for us, it's just better to have him helping us whittle down because there, we have so many ideas and there's so much stuff we want to do. But then what happens is when we get together at the end of one quarter and we start to plan our next quarter, and we start to create those rocks of what we want to do, we usually end up with what, like 25 rocks, yeah, right? Yeah. You can't get 25 rocks done. It's no, more, more, yeah, that's uh, priorities is an American word. When you have too many priorities, they stop becoming a priority, right? Right. <laughs> and so what happens is you start to really think about, well, what can we really get done? Exactly. What, what are, what are really half to... Yeah, what, what I like to say is what is nice to have and what needs to get done. Yeah. And that's the difference, and, right? And what this has really taught me, and because before I was like, I'd have a list of 27 things. Oh, we're going to do all of these 27 things. These are all the things. And maybe one or two of them would get done in a year, right? But there was no filter. It was just like all my ideas and all the things that I wanted to do. But it was so much stuff. 
and there weren't people that were bought into it and nobody was assigned enough or not nobody, but just the assignments of, of this stuff was so out there. But now I have to be like, okay, we have three rock, three main company rocks, right? That's usually what we do. Three to five three to main five, yeah. company rocks per quarter. And that's it. And then every week we are asking, Hey, are we on track to hit that rock or are we off track as a company? And if we're on track, all right, we're okay. But if we're off track, now we got to write it down and we got to start talking about it and see, okay, how do we get off track? Basically means we're stuck. Something's in the way we need to solve a problem. Yeah. We solve it. We move on. And next week we ask the same question on track or off track. Yeah. The other thing that um, I want to mention here that's critical is data. So, Every business, every single business is run by data, right? It's, it's numbers. It's understanding the economics of your business. In the home improvement business, which most of the people listening to, I would imagine almost everybody listening to this is in the home improvement business. There are very specific, very specific data points that you need to understand. For example, how many Raw inquiries, people just calling in or filling out a form, are you getting on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, on a quarterly basis? And is that enough to hit your quarterly sales number? Because from that number, then you need to understand, well, how many of those do we convert to an appointment? How many of those do we convert to a demonstration, a a sales demonstration? you know, how many of those do we close and on and on, you know, there's seven main key drivers there. And um, so, so many business owners run their businesses without understanding the data. And, and that's scary, right? We were always pretty good with the data. Um, yeah. Pretty good. And, um, but since have, since being with, you know, running the EOS system, Man, it's a it's a whole nother it's a whole nother ball game. Well, because you're you're checking it every week. I was I, I guess in my sixteen years in business, I, I was always I was always I always knew the data, but I, I never checked it enough. Yeah. You know, it was always in the background and and you know, me me going into oh let me go to the QuickBooks and let me see these numbers and let me you know, but but it wasn't a, a systematic approach. And that's what I love about EOS. It it, it just creates a routine. Right. EOS is all about a rhythm. It's a rhythm. Every week we're going to meet every quarter. We're going to meet and we're going to plan and every, you know, and it's every, every, every quarter we're going to have a quarterly conversation with each of our, our people. You know, it just becomes this rhythm that most of the times as entrepreneurs, we want to be different. We want to have things change, but you know, 95% of people don't want change. They want predictability. They want consistency. That's one of the best leadership traits we can have. Right. And, and right. that's one of the things we don't like. Right, so it's me being a salespeople that I don't like to sell. Our company needs consistency. Our company needs, you know, predictability. And the faster we learn that, the the faster we can get out of the way, and people can thrive and achieve the results that we want to achieve. Yeah. So Caesar, I'm looking at the clock, and we are yep. just about out of time. But I want to give I want to give the listener something big to walk away from from this. So here's what I think would be big for most of the people that are listening. Let's talk about the differences between a visionary and an integrator yeah. and the whole bipolar conversation. Yeah, and we, and, and we can definitely get into that too. Um, the, the, the most companies that are started are started by a visionary, right? And the visionary has a thousand ideas a minute. You know, they... they, they they, um, they're great at relationship building. They're great at people management. They're typically from the gut, right? They, 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 they know what needs to happen and, 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 and they feel it. They know that, you know, it's intuitive. And then the integrator figure is somebody who is project manager, who knows how to follow through, who's very logic driven and very in the now. So when we, when we really contrast them, the visionary lives in the future. It's what can, what may happen, what, what's going to happen. The integrator lives in the now, the integrator lives in, this needs to be done today. These are the task lists. These are the project management lists. Who's doing this? Who's doing that? They create consensus. They remove roadblocks. They create processes, right? 
And that's one of the biggest issues that most companies have is that the visionary and integrator are the same person typically, right? Because we go insane with our teams and we're like, okay, I have these ideas. And then I went to this conference and I just, I just heard this podcast with Brian and Brian said that we need to start having a vision. So we're going to define that vision, right? And then you start the process and, and then you hit into integrator mode and you tell all your team, okay, let's all band together. Let's be in a room. Let's, let's get to this. But, the, but guess what? Next week you read a book, right? And, and the visionary reads a book and then it's like, oh no, you know what? I got another idea. So he goes back to the office. Everybody stop what we're doing. And now let's implement this new thing that I read. And this friend of mine told me about, which is amazing. And the problem with that is, is that you're creating a bipolar disorder within your company because when the visionary and integrator are the same person, or in your case, like you were partners and you were both doing both things, right? The company just doesn't understand what to do. They don't know what direction to go with. They don't know what, who to believe. And then they go like, oh, here comes Brian with another idea. Thank you. This is not going to work, so I'm not going to do it, right? And then it starts creating that mentality. So, and, and the first day we implement, that's the first thing we do, right? The accountability chart. Um, and that's where, you know, usually that's, that's where we start to define, you know, we throw everybody, you know, everybody's fired. And then we, we start putting people on the seats. But we need to make sure that the visionary and the integrator are aligned, but not the same person. Because if not, the company can go down. Yeah. Yeah. And so what's interesting here, so as a, as a business owner, you go into this business uh, generally by yourself. It's just yeah. you. You're out there yeah. selling. You're, this is how I was. Out there selling. You're doing marketing. You're do, you may even be doing the work yourself. But as you start to build a real business, now you need to step out of all of that doing and become the leader, the person Correct. that's going to take this business into the, the next future. Level. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's the visionary. And typically entrepreneurs, the entrepreneur type is not a good uh, integrator or no. a good chief operating officer the integrator another way of looking at an integrator is as a chief operating officer so you've got the ceo right who is big vision big picture this is you know where we're going and then you've got the coo who's actually responsible for getting the shit done right and yeah. so that's kind of the big difference now i was very, very fortunate in that meeting, that very first meeting that we had, where we determined that I am the visionary of this company, which is the place I am most happy and most comfortable. And my partner is the integrator because that's her role. That's, that's what she's really good at. Now, she's also a good visionary. Yeah, and, and the stat there is that 20% of entrepreneurs are good integrators. And, and, and I think Addy's one of them. Addy's, Addy's surprisingly one of them, yeah. It's surprisingly one of them, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because, both, because both her and I and many of my most successful clients suffer from what we call entrepreneurial ADD. Yeah, right. We're signy all object syndrome. I call it signy object syndrome. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, you know. Squirrel? So, so to the listener, you know, so to the listener, if you are the one that's out there doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it every day, right? But you want to grow your company at the same time, working harder and longer, trying to manage all of these different things doesn't work. You yeah. need to be able to bring in an integrator. And so the way that you do that, the way you're able to, bring someone like this on, obviously you got to be able to pay for them. So that's a whole nother conversation, but. No, but there's always someone within your company that can assume that role. And I think that's why I, I try to stay away from the CEO, COO role, because that's a, that's a title salary kind of thing. I think the integrator is more a function. It's somebody who makes sure 
that what you said in your vision is going to be developed, right? So in my case, it was my office manager. It wasn't like a COO type. It was just somebody who took that role, who took that function, right? She made sure everybody was in the meeting. She made sure everybody was doing what they were supposed to be doing. She called out people if they weren't, right? And she had no problem doing that. And I think that's what the, it's more of a function more than a title. I, I wouldn't, I, some companies, yeah, when you're, when you're a big company, yeah, you got a COO. But when you're a small company entrepreneurial, it could be your office manager. It could be your operations manager. And that's one of the things everybody can be in multiple seats. It doesn't mean that, you know, just because I'm visionary, I can't be in marketing or just because I'm visionary, I can't be in sales. No, that doesn't mean that. What, what it means is um, just don't have too many people doing the same thing, right? So don't have more than one person being accountable for that thing. So if you have yeah, one like sales seat, have one person accountable for sales, period. Right. Yeah. Well, like at the beginning, I was visionary and I was marketing and Correct. I was finance. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Correct. And then we got rid of the the marketing piece and yep. somebody else has that now. And now I'm just, I'm visionary and finance Yeah. and I'm happy. You know, yep. I, I have like half a day a week of real work and the rest of the time I'm just putzing around talking Dreaming. with, with <laughs> you. Um, all yeah. right. So look, this was very, very good. I hope that the listeners liked it. Look, the traction book Caesar um, we all know for entrepreneurs, it's a great book, but isn't there yeah, like but it's a, boring. Yeah, 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 yeah I know. Which, which it's a, is I, I call book? it more of a reference book. I, I, I love Traction. Traction is a great book, but yeah, yeah, it's a reference book. So it's a, like a theory book. So if you like well, isn't theory- Isn't there the smaller book that's a little bit there's, easier? There's a smaller book. So, so I'll, I'll tell you, if Traction is, is the theory book, if you go to a practice book, it's called Get a Grip. It's also okay. Gino Wakeman and Mike Patton, and they came up with a great story of a company going through traction. So it's more of a fable. It's still a long book. If you want a short book, it's What the Heck is EOS? It's an easy book to understand the main concepts. Yeah. And also, like I was gonna, I was gonna say, Brian, if if people just want to go to my website, I'll give them a ninety-minute, you know, no no sales pitch, no pure value, right? a 90 minute meeting where we can, I can go through the concepts. I can show them the tools. I can even send them the tools if they need them awesome. so they can What's get the started website? in that process. Yeah. The, the, the website, website is the profit recipe. So the profit, the profit as a profit recipe. Yeah. The profit recipe.com. Um, and then if you just book a 90 minute meeting there, anyone at either me or any one of our partners, we'll spend 90 minutes with you. No sales, no pitch, no nothing. Just know that this is yeah. all value driven because you know, you you it, it, it's such a great tool. I, I started implementing in my business, um, but it, I, I think it was like for six months before I hired my implementer. So, you know, you can start doing little things that, that make big differences. Yeah. I, I have a number of clients that do it themselves. Yeah. 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 I, I think it's me personally. I just think it it's takes better longer. if you can, if you can make yeah. the investment and implementer, you get faster results, but look, yeah. you got to yeah. start somewhere. But exactly. yes, take Caesar up on this. If this is, if you've got a few people in your company and you want to grow and you're, you know, you know that, that you're just, you, you want to be the visionary of the company and you want to put some processes and some people and some systems in place so that you could do what you need to do in order to grow your business. EOS is, again, it's overused, but I, I don't know what else to say. It is an absolute game changer for every business that's in it. So go see Caesar. He's awesome. By the way, we didn't even talk about Caesar's background, but Caesar's been an entrepreneur <laughs> forever. He's yeah. owned successful businesses. The reason why it's recipe is because he was in the food business for a long time. I was time. in the food business before. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Just sold his company. Congratulations. He's free of the damn food business. <laughs> 16 um, years. I was 16 years in that business. Yeah. And, yeah. and look, and the other thing that is really, really cool about EOS, unlike like quote unquote consulting or coaching or oh, things no, like that. Don't call that, me a consultant. Yeah. Is oh. right. Don't call, don't call me a consultant either. But um, the cool thing is I don't have to be a specialist in yeah. your business. I don't even have to really, I mean, I got to understand business in general, yeah. but I don't have to be an expert on food or home improvement or contracting or anything like that in order to successfully implement EOS into a company. Yeah, we're, we're the experts on EOS and you're, you're yeah. the expert in your business, right? So right. we just come in, teach you, train the person who's going to run it and get the hell out of there. Yeah. yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. 
All right. All right well, look, man. and Caesar. So, and the other thing, you know, I'll, I'll wrap up here with and Caesar is the only. No, you're the. You're one of only two people that has been at every has been a speaker at every single accelerate event that we've had. He, you were there in eighteen. You were there in nineteen. You were there this year, and yeah. you're going to be there for twenty twenty one. True. So, um, that's awesome. Because he's good. Awesome. All right. So um, everybody that is listening, Caesar, thank you again. I appreciate it. Everybody that's listening, go get a copy of The Seven Secrets to Becoming a Wealthy Contractor. You can get that for free at thewealthycontractor.com. You also want to go check out Accelerate, um, our Accelerate live event. For the first time ever, we are having a virtual from home option. So you'll be able to join us from home. Our live seats are almost sold out, but um, go check out accelerateevent.com. And um, I'd love to have you there. It's an amazing event. What I, what, I, what I hear people say about it at the end of the event is crazy. Yeah. It's like, it's, and the guarantee, like if you don't, and if you don't get your value, you, you know, right. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Hey man, I'm a big believer in guarantees. If yeah, I don't deliver, sure. I don't want your money. Yeah. All right. So um, another episode of the Wealthy Contractor Podcast. This is Brian Kaskavalsian with G4 Marketing Group. And until next time. All right. So that's it for today's episode of the Wealthy Contractor Podcast. Let me ask you, did it help you look at your business in a new way? Did it spark an idea or ideas you hadn't thought of before? Do you have a list of action items that you can take and implement into your business or your life today? I really hope so. Now, before you go, make sure you subscribe to the Wealthy Contractor Podcast so you get access to the latest episodes as soon as they're available. We're always striving to provide you with great content so you don't want to miss what's coming up. And a favor. I'd really appreciate it if you'd go to iTunes and post a review of this podcast. Let us know how we're doing. The Wealthy Contractor Podcast is brought to you by G4 Marketing Group, where we help contractors of all kinds create customers, keep customers, and multiply their customers and profits. If you're interested in reaching new levels of success for your company, visit www.gfourmarketing.com or just call us at 305 305- 856-8788 to schedule your free, no obligation, wealthy contractor strategy session. Now, during this strategy session, we're going to look at eight key performance factors in your business, and we're going to help you uncover opportunities for growth, for leads, for sales, and for profit. And finally, We started the Wealthy Contractor as a resource to help you, the home improvement entrepreneur, regardless of where you are on the wealthy scale, get where you want to go. We want to provide you with the motivation, the confidence, the resources, and the tools so you too can live the life of the Wealthy Contractor. Now, the Wealthy Contractor is a place where it's okay for you to want it all. In fact, it's not only okay it's encouraged. So until next time, this is Brian Kaskovalsian with G4 Marketing Group.